Hello everyone. I hope you are happy to be here because me, I am very happy to be here and have this opportunity to present our company. First of all, thanks to Dr. Solomon and thanks to Dr. Prati and SVI for this organization. Uh, the presentation is the advantage of the beet sugar factory compared to the cane sugar factory. So my name is uh, Richard Sauvage. I am a sales manager for Maguin in France. And before the presentation of Fabien Majrac, please let me introduce my company Maguin to you. Magin has been offering a complete range of industrial services and equipment for over 185 years, whether as part of a global offer or a more specific services. Magin designs engineering, manufactures, delivers erection, assemblies, supervisor and control, commissioning, and assists his customer throughout the world and after the completion of the industrial project. Magin SS specialities for beet sugar factory. We have other specialties, but uh, we speak here about beet sugar, fa sugar factory. And we have more than 180 years experience in beet handling. We have the know for the beet unloading and the beet storage, the beet washing, the beet slicing, juice extraction, the lime kilns and mix of lime preparation if you want to produce sugar, if you want just to produce alcohol, this plant is not necessary. And also we have the know-how for the pulp drying and pelletizing with Magan Promil. Or you can, for the drying, use the sun, like some countries. Subject of our presence, after the presentation of Magin, so that you know a little bit more our company, but we will stay available, of course, uh, after uh, this presentation. Subject of our presence is this international conference. The purpose is to give you some data, very important, some data of the beet sugar factory. And to compare, thanks to you, the beet sugar factory to the cane sugar factory. Now let me introduce uh, Fabien Maichak, who is going to make our presentation, because I have not enough know for that. So, please, Fabien. Okay, thank you, Richard. Um, so first, uh, let's see what you get from one hectare of uh, beet and cane. So as uh, it has been told before, uh, the, the, beet, uh, the beet yield is a, is a little bit better uh, than uh, the cane yield and uh, with higher uh, sugar content. So you get more sugar from beets than from cane, but at the cost of less uh, fiber production, because with cane, obviously, you, you, you got a, a lot of uh, bagasse, uh, bagasse that is um, used to produce energy. Uh, the ratio is something about uh, 3,000 kilowatt per ton of sugar. Uh, with, per, with the beet, uh, the fiber has a different uh, use. Uh, it's mainly used today for uh, cattle feed. Uh, you get uh, something like 30, 30 tons of uh, animal feed uh, at 30% uh, dry substance that can be used directly out of the sugar factory. Or you can dry it. But uh, we will talk uh, about it later. Some uh, European factories uh, start to dry their pulp and use it as uh, energy uh, supply for their boilers. And uh, you can achieve, uh, as for cane, uh, uh, energy independence uh, for your sugar factory. Uh, the specificity of the sugar bit compared to cane is where is the sugar? The sugar in the, the sugar juice in the, in the sugar bit uh, is uh, inside, uh, um, uh, uh, inside, the, sorry, inside the cell here. Uh, and uh, when the beet uh, is out of the field, the sugar cannot be extracted. But uh, thanks to uh, uh, the action of temperature, this membrane here uh, is permeable, and the sugar can be extracted uh, via osmosis. The interest of, uh, of this is that the sugar juice is extracted through the sugar cell, the, the beet cell. 
this allows to retain inside the cell the high molecular weight molecules, and you get a higher purity juice thanks to these techniques. In fact, the extraction of juice and the cell itself is the first step of the purification of the juice. So the general uh, process flow, so I compare in orange, it's the cane, you crush, you extract by diffuser or mill, and you make a slight uh, purification before evaporation and crystallization. With the sugar beet, the first step is to wash, because the sugar beet is a root, so the main part of the plant is in the soil. So when you re uh, recover the beet, it's covered with soil and also with stones, leaves that, that need to be uh, removed uh, to, to be processed. Then uh, there is a slicing, it's a little bit different than crushing. Extraction only by diffuser, we cannot uh, press like in a mill. And then uh, an extensive purification before evaporation and crystallization. Uh, the result is molasses, the same as in cane and direct white sugar and not brown sugar like from cane. So the beets have to be washed to avoid the wearing of the slicer and the knives and also to avoid to send uh, soil in the juice to the purification system. So there, is, there are different steps of washing. Uh, with each step uh, has a purpose to separate the soil, separate the stones, separate the leaves. And uh, there is no use of fresh water. All the water is uh, reused uh, in, a, in a closed loop with cleaning of the, of the water, and we use water from the beet that we recover. So there is no fresh and clean water used for that. It's a, it's a total recycling of the water. The soil, the stones, and the weeds uh, that are recovered from the washing station can be used for different purposes. Uh, for animal feed, uh, to, uh, uh, for, for construction, for, uh, for, to make path, uh, and to send back the soil to the field. Uh, so the slicing is very specific. As sugar juice is filtered through the cell membrane, we don't want to crush the beets. We want the beet cells to stay as uh, uh, intact, as uh, complete as possible, and we don't, slice, we don't crush, but we carefully slice the beets to retain as much impurities as possible inside the cell. Slicing is the first step of the purification. So we use very specific knives uh, with a V shape uh, to produce what we call cossettes. It's like a French fry, but with a V shape and not a square shape. And this allows to have the maximum uh, surface, exchange surface to extract the juice and the sugar. Uh, with stronger products and less damage to the beets. Of course, with the equipment, the slicer, comes the equipment to, uh, to make the maintenance of the knives. The knives can be used uh, several times, up to 10 to 15 times. <coughs> so the next step is extraction. So we can use uh, the SMET uh, belt uh, diffusers like uh, it's used in some uh, cane factories around the world, but the, um, the top technology today, the modern technology that is installed everywhere in beat uh, regions is the tower diffuser here. The tower diffuser has a very, uh, efficient, uh, is a very efficient technology uh, giving a very low draft as low as 103% uh, on beets, with very low uh, sugar losses in the pulp, only 1.6% losses of sugar. It produces a cold juice uh, around 10 to 15 degrees more than the beets only, so uh, very small uh, energy usage, and it allows to uh, energy recovery from condensate or from uh, uh, pan uh, vapor, pan steam, uh, to heat the juice for free. <coughs> then, the purification. In cane sugar production, the pu uh, purification is only what we call in, uh, in the beads the, the first liming, the pre-liming, to remove to the, the proteins. But for sugar beads, we make a two-step purification. With the pre-liming, but with then a massive liming followed by carbonation. Uh, I will explain after that uh, why we do this. 
After this first carbonation, we separate the, the lime that is uh, sent to desugarization. This wash lime, as in cane, can be used uh, in the fields and uh, for different purposes. So it's also uh, recycled, it's not a waste. And then we do a second carbonation to remove the excess of lime. And it can also be followed by joist softening on, uh, on the resin beds. The specificity of the liming and carbonation step it, uh, is that improves settling and filtration. In sugar cane production, after the liming, you need to have uh, uh, something like one hour of settling because the, the mud that you produce with the lime is a very low quality and the settling time is very long. This long um, residence time in the settling uh, produces a lot of reducing sugars and a lot of uh, sugar losses and color formation. So this is the first uh, interest. Second interest is that the massive liming destroys the reducing sugar and helps to uh, uh, capture and prevent Col uh, color formation. So th this is why from sugar beet, thanks to uh, the main liming and carbonation, we get the direct white sugar. This is the f same steps that are done uh, to refine brown sugar, because brown sugar is melted and limed and uh, f followed by carbonation. But when you produce the sugar from cane, you produce a lot of very hard to remove, very brown colors. Uh, and with the beet purification process, you remove the reduction cigars and you remove the color as soon as possible when it's easier. So it's more efficient. Uh, it also prevents the fouling of evaporators uh, because you have less uh, particles and less um, uh, acids like uh, tartaric acid and uh, oxalate. Uh, and this means that a sugar, a beet sugar factory can work for 130, 150 days straight without any evaporation cleaning. So this is a, of a, bit, a big interest uh, because you don't need to have uh, the double surface of evaporation to allow cleaning uh, every uh, weeks, two weeks, three weeks. <coughs> so of course, it requires a larger amount of lime so you need to install a lime kiln inside the factory, so you, you process directly limestone. There are also possibilities to use external produced lime and to do the carbonation uh, with, for example, um, uh, exhaust uh, gases from the boiler and uh, thus you make carbon capture thanks to the factory. So we are talking about uh, a sustainable activity uh, so, and, um, and, 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 and carbon. So this is a way to capture the carbon uh, with the carbonation of the lime. So let's talk about the fiber now. The beet pulp can be used for traditionally animal feed uh, as a low dry substance product for a very local use or high dry substance uh, pellets after drying and after uh, pelletizing. And this uh, allows you a long time storage and easy transport. <coughs> uh, the interest of any, uh, cattle feed is that it's locally produced and it, it avoids you to uh, grow, for example, soy or uh, sunflower to, or other products to feed the animals. So you save uh, a soil surface for animal feed or it avoids to import from other countries. So it's an interest for your uh, commercial balance of the country. But as I told you, uh, some factories in France notably uh, starts to uh, use uh, this pulp as energy production because we have less and less cattle uh, in France and in some regions we don't have. So they, are, they uh, need to, to, to dry the pulp and to send it abroad uh, for, for an, uh, another uh, consumer. Uh, but they decide now to use locally uh, their dry pulp for energy production. And to do this, uh, the, the, the beet sugar pulp is dried for free with techniques like uh, steam drying, uh, belt drying, and uh, in tropical countries, they can even uh, do uh, sun drying. And then all the energy from the pulp is recovered as, as high as uh, 800 kilowatt per ton of sugar. And this is 
today the consumption of the sugar factory uh, in Europe. So this means that uh, big sugar factories can also be energy uh, sufficient with their fiber. So if we make a, a small conclusion of the comparison, we know that the bit, and it has been told by previous uh, speakers, a bit is more tolerant to salinity, to frost, to drought. Uh, it uses less water, for example, it's three times less water per year in Northern Africa uh, countries where we work. I have also seen a poster uh, giving the same uh, numbers here for India. You produce more sugar per hectare. You can produce direct white sugar. You have less falling of your equipment and notably evaporation and crystallization. And you have the opportunity to produce either animal feed or be self-sufficient on energy. All advantages have disadvantages and for sure, cane, cane, cane has, his, has uh, its advantages. You can produce more energy from bagasse because you produce more uh, fiber. You don't have to seed every year, but you need to, uh, uh, every three, four, five, six, ten years, uh, make a new planting. So it has also uh, its uh, disadvantages. And of course, can use less, less lime. But the idea is not to replace cane from beets. Uh, we don't want India to go uh, fully to 100% of beets. The idea, as it has been taught before, is a complementary use of beet and cane. If you have a cane factory, you have a cane yard, you have a cane mill and or a diffuser, and then you have your process building. And this is also uh, the same uh, with ethanol production. And if you want to produce beet sugar, uh, sugar beet, uh, in a cane sugar factory, you only have to add the beet handling with the beet yard, the washing plant, and the slicing plant. And if you already have a belt diffuser, you can use it. And if not, you can add the tower diffuser or invest on a belt diffuser that can be used during the cane season and during the beet season. Because the big interest is that the season of the two crops are not at the same time. So if you use cane, and beet in the same factory, you extend the production time of your factory. So you, this means with the same tools, evaporation and crystallization, you produce more sugar per year during more time. So it's a, it's a, more, more, a better return on, the, on investment or your uh, factory. And then if you want to produce sugar, you need the lime kiln, you need to extend the purification process, and you need to dry uh, your pulp. <coughs> but of course, if the goal is to produce only ethanol, you don't have to put the lime kiln and you don't have to extend the purification process. You can produce ethanol directly from the beet juice after the diffuser. And thank you uh, for listening to my presentation. And I think after that, we will have all the questions.